Hello everyone, long time no see, welcome back to my channel and I guess you've already seen this shot on either on my Instagram on, or here on YouTube as a short but if you didn't then you can check it out now here is a small setup I created in order to grow fur procedurally on a 3D model and before we jump into Houdini and I show you how I did this uh, just a reminder, the hip file for this will be on Patreon, here, and also I've updated my Behance recently, so if you wanna check out my professional work and have any questions about it, uh, feel free to check it out, I'll, I'll drop the link in the description. Also, if you have like any general Houdini questions and stuff you wanna ask or like can figure out and need like a quick idea or a direction to, to go into, uh, feel free to join our Discord, waiting for you here. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump into Houdini. Okay, so here we are in Houdini and before I walk you through my setup, I'll show you like the really bare bones version of it and how my my inspiration for for this kind of setup came through so let's drop down a new geo node let's create our friend mr squab okay let's scatter some points let's create a line some normals for, for the squab let's make the line thinner and let's point it in C okay here is the trick that makes like the growth setup work if I drop down like rest position here now we have the rest and now I point triangle and I say that p dot y equals zero and p dot z equals zero let's say now we have a line pointing in x no actually let's make this x because our squab is pointed in, in z okay now if we do a clip Point the clip in Z. Now we can cut through this line, but you would say that's useless. We just created a line, but wait. Now, if we add another point triangle and we set the position back to the rest, now we can use this clip in order to procedurally grow our fur hairs but that straight line is kind of uninteresting so what we can also do is we can now add a mountain just here we, we can add the mountain just here uh, after the rest and we don't want it to be along the normal let me decrease the amplitude a bit and let me decrease the element size. Now if we look through here and we clip, you can see that we have more breakup in the edge and we can use this amplitude to control the amount of breakup and element size to, to control how small or big the, the imperfections in the, in the line are going to be. Okay, so this is like the level 1 of the setup and how it works. So from here I wondered if I can use the same technique, but I could have an attribute uh, drive this rather than have the clip 
do it for me because then I can use like a pyro source spread or I can animate more complex ramps or attributes or something like that in order to to have the growth be more more controlled and more are directable so yeah that's what happened here okay so what we have here is our friend squab here on the right side I just apply the material and then have a node and an output so nothing fancy and here I have created two, two setups that can be switched from one to another here I just subdivided it so I get like more points and here is a wrangle I created that uh, you you can use in order to procedurally animate a ramp going through through an object and have some noise on top of that and here is how it looks like and you can use this offset to animate it in whatever direction you like you can use this frequency to control the frequency of the noise on the edge and here you can control how steep or smooth the, the ramp is this is a really useful thing when you don't want to bother with with like an infection type setup because you want more control and more art directability and here we have an infection setup but it's using the pyrosaur spread because it's already a really good good implementation of an, uh, an infection setup and we don't need to do anything custom that's going to be more complex than that so here I just selected a couple of points uh, I initialize the temperature on this point to 1 and then here we have just the the default source spread but I decreased the cooling rate and I also decreased the rate a bit and increased the surge radius a bit and here is how it looks like okay so both of these both my wrangle and the pyro source spread are going to output a temperature uh, attribute which we are going to use further down here I'm just switching between the two setups, so let's let's leave it to the, to the ramp for now. Here again I'm using a facet in order to, to add some point normals to the model, which I can use to direct like the force. Uh, here this wasn't supposed to be here, this is reminiscent of, of when the shoe was here, so sorry about that. Here we just scatter some points. And here I randomize the p-scale a little. Okay, now on the right side we have the line again, but I added 10 points to it, so we have some resolution to deform it. Here this resample doesn't affect like the point count or anything like that, it's here just to give us the curve view attribute, which we are going to use uh, further down the setup. We copy two points over first to Mr. Squab. Then here I have an animated mountain to give it that sort of uh, underwater moving wet fur kind of effect. Here's how it looks when it's played. Okay, here we have the rest for for our points and here is the trick to adapt the setup in order to be used with an attribute. So what I'm doing here is again p.x is equal to 0, p.z is equal to 0 and p.y is equal to temperature multiplied by curve view and multiplied by 30 I have this multiplier here because this gave the effect a more dynamic look so if we look at this you can see that the lines sort of extend as the ramp progresses 
okay and here we have a clip that's set at one and here if we pull the rest back into the position here is the effect working kind of the same as before but now if we switch to the source bread you can have it drive that you could also like manually paint the mask and use that in order to to drive the pore growth or I don't know whatever comes to your mind so yeah and this is the effect then I'm reading them in another geo node so I can render them as, as strands or as uh, as far easily in either redshift or octane this is how you would you would approach that so yeah this is how i created this shot thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you on our discord server and if you want to have the hip file it's going to be on patreon later today also don't forget to subscribe to this channel and comment down below if you have any questions or if you just like the tutorial and see you next time bye bye